Now, we've been watching globally the decline of government, and it's exciting to see that we are coming to a showdown on the underpinning of modern government, that is the fiat currency, the central banking systems that make the exploitation, that fund governments possible. That is the exploitation of printing money, of creating money at a central authority that isn't backed by anything, but the country that is being exploited is forced to accept. And we are seeing the dollar starting to accelerate in its loss of value. We are seeing the desperate attempts with QE3 on the horizon from Ben Bernanke. We are seeing the euro crisis and the devaluing of the euro there, the crisis in the confidence of all of these systems. And to be able to watch that there is a showdown coming between those who believe in free market money, who believe that currency should serve the people as a, and the demands of the market as opposed to the demands of the policy politicians and the banksters, but there is another showdown coming that's happening already at the local level between people who believe in statism and people who believe in real freedom, and that's the much broader, more important showdown. And we see that at the national level, yes, the government is able to get away with a lot less, and programs are becoming untenable, and certain things are falling away, and certain government scams are just evaporating. And yes, it's very exciting to see, but at the local level, it's happening almost as fast. In fact, in some places, faster, because the government as a protection racket Think of it like the mafia. If the mafia has a subsidiary organization, maybe an individual member of a particular gang who's got their own little racket going, do you think the mafia, central authority, the big boss is going to look out for the little guy if his racket comes under threat? I mean, if he can offer protection being part of a system that favors him, sure, he'll help the little guy keep going. But in the case where the big guy is so desperate just to keep alive, just to keep afloat with his own racket, oh no, he's going to cut the little weaklings off. And in a way, that's what we see happening as government starts to disintegrate, to, to eat its own tail at the local level. You would think, oh, but the feds are going to come in and they're going to save all of these cities that are struggling financially. They're going to aid these states that have become not creators, not the progenitors, not the foundation of the authority for the federal government, rather the dependent subsidiaries of the federal government in, in, in the 50 states and assorted protectorates of the United States federal government. But at the local level, they're collapsing in the same way, and the federal government is not there anymore to bail them out. In Scranton, Pennsylvania, you've heard that there are now firefighters and police officers getting paid minimum wage, along with the mayor, because the city council didn't approve the tax hike that the mayor had proposed. And despite a judge at the county level, again, we see another level of government in conflict with the city. The county level judge ordered the mayor to pay full checks, and yet he still sent them out based on the minimum wage. And these guys are getting screwed. And I would hope that in places like that, and in San Bernardino, California, where they just decided that they can't afford to pay for trash collection anymore, that the people providing these legitimate services, both, uh, well, of course, trash collectors and firefighters providing very obvious direct services, but even police and the services that they legitimately provide in public safety and stopping real crimes, although they are guilty of committing so many more crimes, not just in the aberrations of behavior when they shoot people accidentally, because they don't have the same fear of consequences that a normal citizen has when a gun and a badge protect you from the law itself, but from the you know legitimate services provided by law enforcement officers. There, uh, there are also the incumbent systemic crimes that they commit in enforcing victimless crime laws that put people in cages who never hurt anybody. And today we see 10 Italian cities at risk of bankruptcy, and they might not even reopen their schools this fall. Deep cuts to Italy's provinces may mean that some schools will not be able to open after the summer holidays. This from Nick Squires. The president of the Provincial Government Association said, with these cuts, we won't be able to guarantee the opening of the school year. 
That was Giuseppe Castiglione. The warning of these cities at risk of bankruptcy came just days after Mario Monti, the prime minister, expressed fears that Sicily, which has a high degree of fiscal autonomy, was on the brink of a default. Cities and towns in southern Italy have for years been plagued by mismanagement, corruption, the wasteful use of EU funds, and infiltration by the mafia. But the black list of cities at risk also includes some in the north of Italy, such as Alessandria and the Piedmont region. The Monti government is pushing ahead with an ambitious spending review that envisages cuts to government services worth $26 billion over the next three years. In Argentina, this from AFP, Argentine banknotes are being used in a raffle to determine which civil servants in a small Argentine town will receive their pay first due to insufficient funds. Mayor Bialat Masse, Gustavo Pueo, in a broadcast from Buenos Aires private radio station, Radio Mitre, said, we will draw lots to decide the order of payment. Apparently, this was approved by national mayoral authorities, and the first draw took place Friday with 23 of the town's 92 employees receiving their pay. The rest of them just got fucked. A second raffle is slated for Monday. Home to 5,000 inhabitants, it's a tourist destination in Cordoba province, 700 miles northwest of Buenos Aires. Now, they said that the insufficient funds here specifically were because it was a drop in the funding usually received from the provincial government, which had been suffering because of slowed economic growth, which has been slowed because of national policies and the global policies imposed by the Federal Reserve System. Growth slowed by one half of 1% in May compared with the same period last year, marking the first downturn since 2009, according to official figures. So if the economy in Argentina doesn't grow to feed the beast of government, if it doesn't get bigger to feed the ever-increasing appetites of the bureaucrats for spending more of other people's money, well, then we just can't even pay our employees. We can't even keep the scam going. If the economy was stable, we couldn't even just suck the same amount of money from the people and provide the same services. No, the racket of government depends on the growth of the leech. So it's small towns, big towns, cities, and back to the United States from CBS Boston, some Hummerock residents discuss seceding from Skituate in bonfire dispute. The anger hasn't subsided in Hummerock after 4th of July celebrations were cut short due to safety concerns. The neighborhood met Sunday morning to plan their next move in a quarrel with the town of Skituate. Nearly 100 people attended a, meeting, attended a meeting in the South Hummerock Civic Association Clubhouse. At the meeting, some residents went so far as to call Skituate town officials fascists and say Hummerock needs to break away. And this is really an interesting story because this goes back to July 4th and the Independence Day celebrations where the town was a little heavy-handed in enforcing a ban on bonfires. Fred Hayden, a resident of Hummerick, said, That was a full military operation. I mean, Hummers up and down the beach, state police, helicopters, horseback, bomb squad, and a command post up the center. Yeah. What for? Bonfires are a tradition on the beach, but after a fast-moving fire burned through four homes in March, they shut them down for public safety reasons, right? Well, you know, if, if, if we had one house fire get out of control and burned one house down, we're just going to have to ban fires. Yep, we're going to have to send humanity back to the Stone Age. But that's what government is trying to do, at least moving in the wrong direction, certainly with this reaction. During Independence Day celebrations on July 3rd, yeah, the day before, state police troopers were called in to help maintain order in the mostly senior citizen community. A 70-year-old man says they used excessive force when arresting him, leaving his arms bruised and wrists bleeding. Really? And a, a long-time resident, Emery Langley's quoted 
from the meeting said, every time they talk to you, it's in a threatening fashion. No shit. He claims he was playing patriotic music when town officials marched onto his property and unplugged his stereo. He says an officer then crushed the plug to keep him from starting the music again. Quote, they told my wife, we're going to come back and clean this mess up. We're going to charge you $300 an hour, and we're going to take our time doing it. Are you starting to see the scam here? Now, they're saying that this didn't start with the bonfire ban, and they're now considering secession. As Hayden said at the meeting, the sidewalks haven't been fixed. There's potholes in the roads. They're not even trimming the bushes back from the sidewalk, so you have to walk out into the street. They're just not giving us any services. We're like a donor community for Skituit. Really? Typical of the Bay State's revolutionary spirit, Hummer taxpayers are asking for more representation of the town council. Right, because that's the revolutionary spirit, to beg for more representation to beg the king for scraps. When a group attended a meeting of the town selectmen on July 10, they were not permitted to speak. Now they plan to write letters to town officials as well as complaints to the state police, the attorney general, and Governor Devil Patrick. As Dick Sparks said at the meeting, people are fed up with the town. They do absolutely nothing for us. Sparks has been urging his neighbors to secede from Skituit for 15 years. A new town hasn't formed in the Bay State in almost a century, but the idea is gaining traction. The group will spend the week revising their letters. They plan to meet next Sunday at 10 a.m. to sign them and discuss longer-term solutions for their problems. Which seems somewhat short-sighted, don't you think? Although certainly a move in the right direction to assert independence, the right to secede, being quintessentially American and absolutely essential to freedom, and eventually we must all secede as individuals from any system that would exercise unjust authority over us. But they tell us that we need government. They tell us that it is absolutely essential for maintaining law and order. It is essential for providing for our security, and we can see at the national level that even just of the last decade, the effects of the work of the military-industrial complex have been to make us less safe. They say we need the federal government's economic oversight for economic stability, and we can see in the current economic climate where that has gotten us. But even at the local level, when people say, but at the local level, surely we need government for this. Surely at the local level, a system based on force and coercion and violating people's rights in order to protect them or serve them. Surely at the local level, it, Adam, it has to work. Surely at the local level, for security, we have local police forces. For stability, we have government zoning and regulation. For essential services, we have the city government there to provide us with roads and sidewalks and firefighters and garbage collection and police officers that are all there for your own good, that are all there just to serve and protect you. But as we're starting to see now, from top to bottom, the government scam is totally full of shit. And now we see it also as totally unsustainable.